hi everyone welcome back to game maker cast it's make again and in this lesson we're going to be setting up our initial room so that it could be the basis of the rest of the rooms throughout the series in this video we're also going to create an initialization object that's going to handle the difficulty as well as any grid requirements that we're going to have down the road so the very first thing i want to do is rename the original room or create a new one if you don't have it I'm going to rename this to rm underscore and I'll just call it rm underscore init for initialization. Now inside the room, the only thing I really want to change is the width and the height of our room. I'm going to change it to 768 by 512. Just makes it a little bit smaller. Now the next thing I want to do is create a variable, sorry, not a variable, a object here. And I will call this object init. And this object is going to be responsible for initializing any variables that we're going to need at the start, such as the difficulty, the rows and sorry, rows and columns of our grid, as well as spacing. So when we call those functions, we already have this already set up. So to do this, we can have a create event. And in here, we can start storing the different variables that we need. So we're going to need a game difficulty. And I will just set it to one. So this will be like easy, medium, or hard. Next, we'll need a grid rows. We'll set it to three. The grid columns as three. And then the grid spacing. And let me explain what each one of these are here. So the grid rows is actually going to be the height of the grid that we're going to be drawing. The grid columns is going to be the width of the grid. And then the grid spacing, if I spelt that correctly, is going to be the space in between each square. Space between each square. So when we draw something, we'll have something that looks like this. And within here, there will be 40 pixels. Now, the next thing we're going to do is just, we're going to go to the next room. So we'll say room, we're sure go to next. So whatever room is directly under initialization room, that's the room that we're going to load up next. So let's actually go ahead and duplicate this room and let's just call it room test. And this will be our kind of testing bed for this video. Now, what I would need to do is a few things to make the next video work properly. So right now we have these four variables and in the next room is going to be our actual game room. So how do we access these variables in our game room? Well, we could say our object is persistent because right now, if we uncheck persistent, right now the only way to access these variables is through this specific object here. For example, in our room test, if I go to the creation code and I say show message, it will let me look for object in it. And obviously I could do game underscore difficulty, but what's gonna happen as long as we have this object within our initialization room, what's gonna happen as soon as the object passes on to the next room, that object is destroyed and we can no longer read the game difficulty. So we could easily just say that this object is persistent and because we are creating it at the start of our game, that will actually give us access to these variables. So you can see we have no error there and it's showing the game difficulty of one. However, for this, I don't really think we need this object to be persistent. The easiest way that we can handle this is by declaring these four variables as a global variable. So to do this, we just need to write the word global and put a period in front of our variables. So we'll do that for the difficulty, rows, column, and spacing. And I'll make sure that persistent is unchecked. And now if I run the game, we should see an error here. And that's because our object in it does not exist. However, because we have the global keyword here in our code, instead of accessing that object, we can just access the global variable, which will be game difficulty. Now, if we run this again, we should see one and our game is not crashing. So now, no matter what room we are in, we actually have access to these four different variables. And we're going to be using that in the next session to actually draw out our grid and then start working on some clicking of the lights and toggling them on and off. I know this video is short, but I'm just trying to keep this series on task. 
And right now, I'd like to thank you for watching this series. A special thank you to my supporters on Patreon. A shout out to Paula Matt. If you found this video or any of my other videos useful, please show some support by subscribing or liking the video below. Once again, thanks for watching.